On the breakfast, the Nigeria Agenda 2050 is being set up. It's set to transform the country into an upper middle income country with a significant improvement in per capita income. We will take a look at the highlights of the agenda. Also on the breakfast, stakeholders advocate gender equality as Nigeria ranks extremely low in gender equality index rating across the globe. What are the factors responsible? All right, and of course, uh, we'll be looking at some of the details uh, of the headlines in today's National Daily. But more importantly, um, with our guest in of the press um, doing a review of the president's speech this morning. All these are here on The Breakfast. All right, welcome. You just uh, watched the president uh, address the nation, uh, President Muhammad Buhari address the nation live. Uh, we are back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, of course, uh, for those reasons. So for that reason, we're studying behind time. And uh, we'll look at the speech. Once again, you're welcome. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this morning. Right. Uh, we have uh, Ezekiel and Yaituk, our guest analyst on In Off the Press this morning, uh, joining us a bit earlier because uh, the president came knocking. You know, the cock crows are done, is what they say. And the president had called everyone out and said to the nation, I want to speak to you. Um, Ezekiel and Yaituk, thank you very much for your time and good morning to you. Good morning and um, happy belated Valentine's um, wishes to everybody. Same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sure that uh, you've had to take maybe an extra glass of water or if you do coffee, maybe some coffee or something just because of the, uh, the fact that you have to talk, to clear your throat so we can talk earlier because we are uh, bringing you on earlier than usual. Um, but the president has spoken to the nation this morning uh, for highlight of the president's speech to Nigerians after he met with the central bank governor uh, just some hours ago, uh, previously, a day before, is that uh, he's extending the validity of just a 200 naira note uh, for 60 days uh, with effect from February 10, 2023. It's going to coexist side by side with the new naira notes, uh, 200, 500, and 1,000, but only 200 naira of the old notes will be uh, will continue to exist. What are your thoughts on this this development? I I love my president. <laughs> tell you, that guy is smart. You see, the, the 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 whole problem that is going on. If you look at it, I've taken time to really look at every single thing, and I see a lot of conspiracies. You know, I think it's a very good policy. But I, I knew it was a policy that was going to hurt a lot of um, big guys, especially the politicians, um, um, the governors and those big people that had stashed up money for, for the election. And, um, you know, all the, the, the hardship, uh, I think that the banks have been complicit. I can say that, and Mr. President said that much today, because we really shouldn't have had that level of hardship when you look at the details about the money that has been released and if the banks were making these monies available to people in that 20,000, 10,000 tranches in the ATMs, 2,000, 1,000, we won't have any problem. They just shut out such that the, the little people were really suffering. The hardship was terrible. It was, it was horrend, or, you know, almost unimaginable. So they wanted to force the hand of Mr. President for him to like um, say, OK, everybody go ahead. Now, they, they keep this money, it's not in 200, not, not even, it's between 500 and 1,000 notes. That's how they spend the election money and all those things. And we always, we're talking about the poor man, the poor man, the poor man you knows, spends largely 500, less, but majorly 200 and down. And Mr. President says, guy, you know, I'm richer today because all this money was going to go, but today he's telling me, go ahead and rock your money. And I think that if we are being honest and sincere, then we should know. And again, aside from saying, let the monies go ahead, the 200 go ahead in circulation, he has also said, let the, you know, uh, the agencies responsible for monitoring 
talking about uh, like the EFCC, ICP, you know, the police and the rest. Let them go after the people that are the banks in particular that are making things difficult for people that are not bringing this money out. What I would like to add is that central banks should make available the, the inflow of money to central banks at state levels and, if possible, break it down to local government levels and let each bank tell us how the money is being used. Once they know that there is that transparency in the monitoring, I'm telling you overnight, money will just flood the whole system. I'm happy that he did not yield to the pressure of the big people who have been planning how to spend money in elections. I'm very, very, very happy with what Mr. President has done. The banks should comply and make money available to the poor people. Mm. Well, let's even, you know, make reference to uh, the comments from the president. He talked about the narrow redesign policy, affirming that it will, you know, curb inflation, corruption, and improve transparency. Do you agree with the president? I agree. I, I'm not an economist. So uh, I believe that um, it, it, it has already addressed certain things like kidnapping. I'm telling you that everybody will tell you that all those issues of ransom, nobody has heard it for the past couple of weeks. Because where is the money going to come from? It's not there. And it's still going to continue because you don't pay ransoms in two 200 Naira notes or 50, 50 Naira notes and things like that. It's going to be a deterrent. I agree with Mr. President on that. But as to how it affects inflation and all those, I don't want to chat into where I can't talk authoritatively on. But I know that for as long as we can let the little people, the poor man, the common man, have access to his 50,000, 20,000, you know, these are the sort of monies you can carry in 200 Naira notes. But these guys are talking in terms of 100 million, 200 million, and it's going to be really, really unwieldy to carry in 200 Naira notes. So I think that it's going to still achieve what they had in mind to achieve. And besides, his story is not two days, not three days. He's giving you 60 days way ahead of the so-called election cycle. So I think that we really don't, we shouldn't complain anymore. What we should do next is let the, 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 the agencies responsible really hit the banks really hard. You know, let me say this for the record. Of all the institutions that we have in Nigeria, it's my very personal opinion that politicians are not the worst culprit, civil servants are not the worst culprit, it is the banks that are the cesspool of corruption and the headquarters of corruption. You cannot affect any successful corruption issue without an understanding with the banks. I think Nigerians need to really look into the banks because these banks owned by these big people, they are a problem to this nation. Hmm. All right. Um, the, the, the president, like you rightly said, talked about uh, uh, the influence of money in elections. Um, do you think that uh, this policy, because the central bank uh, through the governor has been talking about mostly about uh, the economy, you know, strengthening the Naira, reducing uh, inflation. Um, do you think this, this, this policy would, in a, in a very, very significant way, or totally, now, if he had been carried out the way the CBN planned, would have uh, totally eradicated uh, the influence of money in the forthcoming elections? Because some politicians have come out to say, for example, yes, on week the governor of River State, that uh, them they can't pay, even with this policy. They're, they're already prepared for the election. You know, it, 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 it has already. I, I'm into politics, you, you know, that I'm contesting. Now, I was supposed to have a major rally today, but I had to put it off to Tuesday next week because of the riots that was going on within the city. But you see, usually you want to pay the transportation, you know, people who are going to like um, maybe bring some of your, like, like um, we have the float, so you have to pay for it. And then you also have certain, um, you know, things that you've got to do. Now, People like us did not feel it because usually our budget is relatively low and they're manageable. By the time you have, say, 500,000, you can have a good rally and it's because you don't pay the crowds to come. But these other people that used to ferry crowds from one place to the other, you have 200 vehicles carrying people from all over the state and bringing them, and then they pay the people 
Now the cost of getting money from ATM, not ATM, from these um, uh, POS operators was getting to about 30%, 20%. So if you needed 100,000, it means that you're going to have to pay 120,000. If you needed 1 million, you're going to pay 1.2 million, 1.3 million. It was too much. So they started playing down and joining me in doing town halls, which is what you really should do. So I think that let the money be scarce so that politicians can engage with the people and play down on the jamborees because a campaign is a time you interface with the people and tell them what you want to do. And not all these jamborees of all manner of uniforms and everything. And at the end of the day, what do they say? In fact, the music is even disturbing you from even talking, you know. And the essence of campaign is for you to communicate with the people. So I think that the policy is very good and it has helped people to start to do research on what to tell the people because you can't bring that crowd again. You're now engaging the people on smaller units in town halls and that's when they're able to ask you questions, interrogate your programs and your manifestos. I think that is in the larger interest of our policy and our politics. Well, um, I, I like you to, you know, share your thoughts on this other one. So, I mean, some people are already expressing their thoughts as to the window of returning the 501,000 Naira note. And, and some are saying that it's not fair, that it probably the expectation should have been that uh, you have the banks being able to, you know, mop up this uh, cash within seven to ten days rather than having the CBN. So do you think that the extension period and the mode of operation is not fair? I'll tell you this. You see, we, we live in a country where we just lie to ourselves. Sister mine, you know that the bulk counting rooms of the banks have been empty. You also know that banks had to stop operations on Saturdays and Sundays because there were no longer notes to count. We know what the problems are. The poor people have already sent their money into the banks. They don't have problems with returning old notes. The problem was that after sending their money to the bank, they could not get money out to operate. So the, big, the, the small people have no problem with returning old notes to central bank. They don't have those old notes anymore, just a few in certain areas where they are like maybe the, um, the northern part of Nigeria in inter interlands where there are no banking facilities. Even with that, you know, they, they, when they started bringing their money back, they had a problem with, um, you know, saying if you put in the money, you'll be able to get it out again. So some of them held back the money. And the, 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 the president has said that besides the central bank, they are going to also have other agencies. Uh, I, I think that what that means is that these commercial banks are going to be also instructed to collect. And then for the interlands, they are also going to set up systems. That's not going to be a problem because we never had a problem with returning money. We never had. There was no problem. That's almost one trillion or 900 or something billion that is missing is the money. Over 90 percent of them are the money in the soccer ways. The money that people cannot return easily because the banking system, once you return a certain amount of money, it is incumbent upon the banks to do a report and send it to the monitoring agencies like EFCC who are going to interrogate that source of money. That's where the problem is. So in terms of returning money to the central bank, we really don't have any problem. I can tell you that the man on the street does not have that problem. His problem is my money that I sent there because I needed to change it. I used to keep under my pillow. Can I have it back? Even if it's in bits, let me be able to buy food. Let me be able to go to market. Let me be able to restock my goods. So we really don't have any problems at all with the issue of returning money to the banks. It is those big people who had refused to return them all along that are hoping that they were going to still circulate it within the system, you know, and now they can no longer do that because they didn't keep those monies in 200 Naira notes. They are largely 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. I really think that Mr. President has been well advised in this matter and is very ingenious and is going to make the young people or the, 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 the poor people happy. Let him just pump those notes back, pump them back. Let the, 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 the 200 Naira notes overflow in the, in the commercial banks. 
let them just carry out a major operation of sending the 200 naira back into the system if he is well advised. I can tell you that by tomorrow, the whole world, uh, the whole of the country is moving on as if nothing ever happened. That is Nigeria for you. But those guys that had those huge, humongous amounts of money stuck in, in their soak away, that money will be in the soak away and they will soak away. I can assure you of that. We've seen the, uh, the unfolding um, you know, protests around the country. Um, some people have claimed that uh, some of these attacks on banks. I mean, yesterday was, um, it was like uh, the wild, wild west. We saw what happened in Edo State, Benin City to be precise. We saw what happened in Ilori, Kwara State. We saw what happened in uh, Ibado, Oyo State. We saw what happened in parts of Delta State as well. Uh, you know, do you think the president is saying he's uh, sympathizing with um, Nigerians? Uh, he says that, uh, quote, I'm addressing you as a democratically elected president to sympathize with you over the hardship being experienced as a result of the Naira redesign policy. Um, people, some people had clamored even as, as late as yesterday night for the president to say something before news filtered out that he was going to address the nation. Do you think this speech will quell the rioting around the country? No, it will not. If the president was thinking and thinking well and had good advisors, as at yesterday, during the day, he would have had a meeting with the central bank governor and advised him, directed him, instructed him to send the 200 Naira notes over the night, mop up operations, send them to every single state. He would have done that advice. And by this morning, virtually every bank should be sending out, there should have been an overnight operation where these monies are right back into the system and people are being paid on ATMs, people are being paid over the counter, people are being paid. Once Nigerians hear that, oh, the thing is there, people are being paid, people will cool down. So saying it means absolutely nothing to an average Nigerian. What he needs to do is to walk the talk. And the way to walk the talk is make sure that people go to the bank this morning. This morning, they are going to go back to the bank. And they are like, oh, yeah, yeah, money is coming. Oh, yeah, please queue up and they start taking the money. Because that operation should have been done overnight. It takes nothing to have moved that money from the central bank to the state capitals. And the state capitals, to move the money, just tell the people, you know what? Come from 12 o'clock, come from 9 o'clock, you will get money. Money is now available. Once you do that, you now have a combination of the old and the new. And then circulate widely, that, like the media is doing now, the social media is going to be a buzz with the fact that the uh, 200 Naira notes are now legal tender. Now, there are also going to be some people who have discovered some money, like the 200, you know, over the period, like, oh my goodness, I didn't um, send this one in. Those people are going to be happy and they'll start spending their own 200 naira. So I think that it's not about the talk. Talk is good, but talk is cheap, except you walk the talk. Well, uh, I also like us to move away from, you know, the naira conversation. And uh, as part of the president's speech, he also talked about, you know, climate change. And according to the pr uh, president, uh, in order to adopt the global net zero aspiration, the administration took the national... Uh, took it to at the national level and they are requiring climate justice in the sense that, you know, Africa and developing nations produce only a small proportion of green gases. The, the president is, it's part of the national, you know, strategy of the country and we're asking for, you know, justice for Africa and justice for Nigeria in the sense that uh, we don't emit so much, but what can be the compensation? Uh, what do you make of this strategy? I, I think it's something I really can't find how it got into today. We had a national emergency, and I expected the address to focus on the national emergency and not the talk of climate change. Is it that you needed something to fill in the gap because this was too short? It was too short. It doesn't matter. Look for something else. What's my business with climate change at a time like this? People are thinking, how do I get my money to feed my family? How do I go and pay my hospital bills? How do I go and get my market restocked? That's what people are talking about. What's your own world? What's the poor man's uh, issue with the climate change? 
it is it's it's a policy he needs to have made at a certain occasion it's a good policy it's a good approach it's like look you guys are those emitting all these um, terrible gases that affect and deplete the ozone layer and all those things. And then we, we, we are those that bear the brunt of it. At the end of the day, if you want us to go this way, knowing that you are the main culprit, then tell us what sort of deals that we can have. Even if we can link it to debt forgiveness or things like that, tie it to something, but tell us what you are giving for what we are taking from you. So it's a good policy, it's a good direction, it's a good bargaining. Somebody else started that. I can't remember whether it was a Ghanaian president, but one of the presidents talked about it. So for me, I think it's a good policy, but it's coming on the wrong day. As of today, there's riots all over the place, there's insecurity, there's a lot of you know hardship experience. Who wants to hear about climate change today? Please. All right. Um, um, uh, looking at the, 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 the U-turn or the extension given by the president, um, I do not know if the, the, the banks, commercial banks, have deposited the old notes returned by or mopped up from the system. 1.9 trillion naira uh, so far, uh, the central bank says, they're looking out for uh, uh, just under 900 billion naira more to be taken in to the uh, mopped, up, mopped up from the system, out, outside the banking system. If this, I mean, I, I, are you confident or do you believe that the money, the 200 naira notes, will be sufficient and uh, will be released to the public? I mean, because the uh, CBN keeps saying that they've given the commercial banks the money, but we don't see I'm any money in the ATMs. Um, My brother, what magic I'm will be done to, to the old notes? Where will we get them from? Would the same thing no, happen? I'll, I'll tell you how it works. The very first thing is that the banks were colluding with these POS operators and making, you know, it's like round tripping. They were just cashing out. Imagine that you bring out a million, just one million. In a day, because of the high volume of need, you can turn that one million five times very easily. It means that you have made an extra million for just that amount. So these bankers, the people that were in the treasury, were just round tripping with not just POS, but the big boys who were going to do election. You take a million to somebody, and the guy is crediting you with 1.2 million. So they were sending, they were trading with the money. The bankers have been the culprit. Because if you look at what people take from the POS, you'll be shocked. That is so minimal. People go to POS to withdraw 1,000 naira. I've been there. I've been to the POS where I see somebody, pa, 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 500, puts in his pocket. He moves on. I'm like, really? Do you understand me? So... Let the banks be monitored. Let EFCC not be part, get, get in on the deal. Let, let, look, if, if a mafia is serious, let him engage citizens and say, please, if you go to this place and there's no money, let us know. And then the banker, the manager has got to let us know, you know, how we spend the money. And let me tell you something. There's something else you can do if they are serious. Every POS transaction is within the banking subsector in terms of records. Please give us your POS withdrawals, juxtapose that with the money I gave to you, and tell me where the differential is. It's simple. Give us your POS withdrawals, give us all your POS, bring the terminals, get us what has come from it, juxtapose that with the money I sent to you, and then account for the differential you discover that less than 30% went to the POS. Now, what happened to the 70%? We run in a country where there are no consequences. People just get away with blue murder and cause terrible economic hardship. And we keep quiet because there are no deterrents and there are no consequences. The president needs to wake up and know that he's got to have both the carrot and the stick. If you are a leader, if you don't have the capacity to wield the big stick, then you are not a leader. Even the Bible says that God chastises him whom he loves. There's a place for chastisement. You can't always be talking and then they do what they are doing and I tell you, I've done my very best. 
who says that you were called to do your very best? You were called to solve a problem, not to do your very best. And if you didn't know that, all these people that want to be president today, they should know that they are not called to do their very best. They are called to solve the problem. And if they, they it's like high jump. You know you can't jump one meter. And then you are going to say, I'll do my very best. I've jumped 0.5. What's that? You are supposed to jump one meter. If you cannot jump one meter, then get off the track. So, um, Ezekiel, you know, this is when we transit to the papers at this point in time. Let's quickly run through uh, the pages of our national dailies. We have the punch. And I'm sure these papers didn't have enough time, you know, to update uh, uh, what the, the headlines in terms of what's the story on the front line. I mean, due to... Uh, the urgency that the president had called uh, quite early, right? So, but uh, on the punch, that's where I start off with. New narrow crisis, violence spreads in state, three killed, banks bond, violent protesters rock, Delta, Edo, Ondo, Oyo, Quara, Benwe State. Supreme Court maintains anti-deadline. Other seven states join legal battle. Son Wolu, more governors threaten sanctions over old Naira notes rejection. Uh, there's also, uh, if you look at the front page of the punch now, you find the picture of a bit of what you know transpired in some of the state. Uh, private sector blames fuel scarcity as inflation hits 21.8%. We care for others not relevant outside the PDP, PCC spokesman. Uh, the Presidential Campaign Council is quoted to say. And uh, why APC governors rejected federal government settlement terms, says Erufai, and marketers ignore federal government and sell petrol over 213 per liter. Looks like this, you know, the queues have reduced. Uh, that's, that's the size of it uh, on the punch now. All right, let's quickly go to uh, the next paper very quickly. And I will take... Um the Guardian, um, because the president made uh, reference to the Supreme Court uh, uh, case, and uh, that's another angle, the legal angle, which I hope I guess we'll, we just have the time to talk about. Nara redesign, hope deferred as Supreme Court adjourns it to February 22. Um, I think we'll just uh, take a couple more. How presidential candidates pay influencers to peddle fake news on social media. This is a CDD. Uh, report to so look at all that. Kaskasi, protest rock Benin worry. Ilori Benin Uyo. It was uh, almost as if we're getting to a Magadon yesterday. All right, uh, we'll go to the next paper. Uh, quickly looking at the next paper here before we have Ezekiel Yai to continue with his thoughts now. And, uh, that's on the national dailies. Hope deferred as Supreme Court adjoins suit to February the 22nd. And nine more states join suits. Buhari meets MFLA. Again, after Apex Court adjournment, Erufai debunks extension report says no meeting took place this week between the federal government and governors. Akira Dolu to Buhari, APC rating in free fall, reverse currency policy now. That's like an order. Songwo Lu vows to prosecute those rejecting old Naira notes. So um, um, <laughs> I, I really don't think that a lot of people were aware you know, was coming, like if the president was coming with this, but you know, it's very hilarious. Forget about free fair elections. If all notes are allowed before February 25th, Shehu Sani is quoted to say. I mean, are this statement not very insightful? Jam shifts 2023 UTME registration to February the 22nd. That's also at the time where you have the Supreme Court, you know, joining uh, her meeting or that suit. And then you have how presidential candidates pay influencers to peddle fake news on social media. But we move away for the want of time. All right. Uh, so, so we'll just uh, 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 allow our guest this morning, Ezekiel, uh, to, to quickly give us his thoughts on, on some of the, uh, the headlines on the front pages this morning. Um, Ezekiel, the, the legal angle, uh, of course, the president has um, talked about the, the Supreme Court case. He said that, you know, that the, uh, he uh, and his government are going to allow the law run its course. But um, in, in ordering just uh, 500 uh, and uh, uh, 1,200 narrow new notes to continue uh, to be used, and only the 200 old notes to be legal tender, um, he also said it starts on February 10, when the court cases were still on beyond February 10, and the injunction 
you know, uh, at a court temporary or interlocutory injunction, whichever it is, subsisted till February 15 when the Supreme Court panel of justices resumed. Isn't the president going against what he's saying, that his administration will allow the course, the law run its course? I, I, I saw, I noticed that. I saw a little bit of a contradiction there. But I, I saw a little beyond that into a guy that was being clever by half. Okay, so in one breath, he's telling you, well, we want to obey the rule of law, whatever it is that the, the courts say, we will respect it. On the other hand, he comes and emphatically says, these ceased to be legal tender on the 10th of February. Now, this other one would continue to be legal tender until the 10th of April you know, 200 naira only, and he, he's not made any reference whatsoever to that of the, uh, the, the issues of the 1,500 before the Supreme Court. So I, I don't know whether it is the concept of uh, maintaining a status quo antebellum, and, and if that is, what would be the status quo antebellum? Is it that it is that you go to where it was before the policy, or you go to where it was by the time the judgment was brought, in which case there was a policy. I'm not a lawyer. I'm wearing black. But I'm not going to try to go into that area before I say what I shouldn't say. But, uh, well, we understand that you're not a legal practitioner. But as we move on, we will just uh, try to share your thoughts on this particular one. If you look at the destruction that has been meted, I mean, uh, yesterday, going on every social media platform, looking at the reports, lifetime reports, or user-generated videos and what have you, was very scary. And you ask yourself, is that going to be a future for this policy? I mean, the policy that has been introduced since 2012, we're still grappling with it. What exactly uh, is going on? And that's also... You want to make an example of, you know, the fuel subsidy. Up until now, we're still, we can't take subsidy. We should take subsidy because there's no acceptance. I'd like you to speak to that. Yeah, you see, two things. The very first is that um, two hardships came at the very same time. Yesterday, just yesterday, I bought fuel at 450 naira in Uyo. I did yeah, just yesterday. Imagine the guy that has a barber's shop. Now, he cannot, the little money he has that used to fill his tank, he goes there and he discovers that it is just a quarter of the tank, which can only last a few customers. And the money he makes from the few customers cannot even, you know, last. Where, you know, it, it, it was frustrating. I saw it firsthand. It was really, really frustrating. I can understand how people are acting the way they are doing. It's just that we, the elders, try to go intervene and tell them two wrongs don't make a right. I know I got into a bank and spent God knows how long, and they now brought the 50-50 Naira note, you know, and gave me to be able to make up 20,000 Naira. By the time I came out of the bank and saw some women with children, I just couldn't understand how I could enter my car and drive off. I just had to give that money there because... One way or the other, I have credit ratings in place. I can easily say, okay, give me this. Okay, I'll pay you later. Thing. But these guys have no hope whatsoever. And the children are crying. They've not eaten. I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. I had to, like, distribute the money there and then see how adults were scrambling. Two of those notes was just 100 naira. Two was just 100 naira. By the time you give five, it's 1,000 naira. You couldn't even give five because there were so many. You had to give, like, two, three, two, three, three, 60 naira. What does that take? buy? But, so, so what's but, uh, responsible for the difficulty of, I mean, implementing this policy over time? Uh, if you look at the cashless policy, like I rightly no, mentioned, it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like we're talking about this in 2022. But this conversation has been on for a very long time, even though it was suspended. So, Which conversations? I, I think you've lost me there. I'm talking Nala. about the cashless policy. Because all yeah. of this were, were driving towards, uh, you know, a cashless system. You're saying two different things. There's a difference between a cashless policy and a redesign of, of the notes. 
one complements the other. That cashless policy, there are still going to be more policies coming, you know, until the, the, the limit is reached, so to speak. So this is like um, an addition to the policy. But what we are saying is that, and you know, it came overnight. People didn't even know about it. So it's not like it's been there all along. The no, so, so maybe we talk about the cashless policy for a bit. Don't forget that okay. there's been several limits that has been put as to with the right narrow redesign, you're correct. It's hand in hand, and that comes together with the limits. And so you have the limit. It's not the first time that was being put out as to how much individuals yeah. or corporate organizations can take out just yeah. to ensure that, you know, we go cashless. So my point yeah. is, why do we always struggle, you know, with achieving the implementation of this, especially also if you also look at the issue of fuel subsidy? We're still struggling to implement or agree whether we should remove or not remove, you know, fuel subsidy. I'll tell you, in terms of the policy, the fifth columnists, those people that are just hell-bent on... You see, every policy benefits some people and disenfranchises some people, okay? For instance, if you were like, um, you know, a bulk uh, cash exchanger and they're no longer bulk cash, it means that you are going to have a problem, you know, in your business because everybody's no, the, the bulk cash is no longer there. Now, on the other hand, when you come to the banks, why would the transfer platforms not work? For me, it's sabotage. Because we've always talked of cashless policy, which means that you should have your robust platform to accommodate at least minimum of 80% of your customers to do their transactions online. But at this particular point in time, all the backbones failed. Is it because this will re refuse to... I, I went to one of the banks and I said, what's going on? They said, no, we've, we've had this arrangement made from a year ago, I said, you're talking to somebody who is very, 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 you know, IT, ICT savvy and, 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 and I, I, IT, you know, you know uh, uh, literate. So don't tell me that. I run websites and as the traffic comes, I know the bandwidth to extend to make sure that it accommodates the traffic. You knew this and it does not take you a year for you to upgrade your, your, your backbone on your, on your I, 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 IT platform. How come that at a time like this, that there's no cash, you cannot do a transfer? You get to a, a filling station, you don't have cash, you put in your card, your card fails, you are debited. Now, this guy says, you cannot leave because i got to get my money. I say, look at the alert. I've paid, they've debited me. The guy says, so this, the frustration was getting to a very inhuman level because the banks refused to make the back ends work for online transactions. Yeah. So uh, for me... Architect, really... thank you so much. We, we have to go. Um, I think what I can take away from your analysis uh, this morning and just supposing that with what the papers are saying um, is that we're still in the state of uh, uh, confusion. And like the Guardian uh, put it this morning, uh, we're still in a state of, of flux, you know, um, because the court is saying, the Supreme Court has adjourned hearing till uh, February 22, which means that, uh, like you said, the status quo ante uh, remains. And the president has said, oh, no, you can't use the old notes except for the old 200 naira notes. Um, it's confusing. It's conflicting. Who do we believe? The president had just one sentence on the court cases. He said he's aware and uh, he knows that pronoun some pronouncements have been made. Um, I don't know, man. Are we going to be in the... Uh, Constitutional crisis, a legal conundrum. Only time will tell. To end on a very simple note, please, banks, be have what you call emotional intelligence. Make these two hundred naira notes available at your ATMs and on the counter. Pay people they are five thousand, they are ten thousand. Those of us that have millions and billions, we will take your court case or no court case. So you're, 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 you're encouraging the banks to join the CBN and uh, any other person in um, disobeying court, court uh, orders? The banks should make money available to Nigerians this morning. We will discuss the other one when we don't chop. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you very much, Ezekiel. Yeah, it's, okay. it's been great having you. And please uh, keep up the good work. I heard you talk about, you know, you know those who you, you, ha you had... Uh, uh, to help out with some cash 
um, we'll all try to do the best we can to help those around us. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks so much. God bless you all. Right. I will still have more conversations ahead. Of course, uh, a new national development plan has been uh, kicked off or, or, you know, not launched, but has been put out uh, by the federal government. We'll look at that vis-a-vis um, -vis the development of the country. Uh, that word, vis-a-vis. -vis. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> That's fine.